Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Marconi Instruments TF1246. They just call this a, an oscillator uh, from 40 kilohertz to 50 megahertz. We got eight rangers and by the feel of this I already know there is a big carousel switch in this unit so the eight units they cover the frequency band like this I think there's a little bit of overlap because if we look at the the stop see it goes a little bit beyond So here's, can you see what I'm saying? Yeah, this is uh, 40 kilohertz, right? And then it goes, it's a little bit, I don't know if that is annoying really, but it just goes the other way around, right? <laughs> I don't know if that is... I can't yet figure out if I find this annoying. <laughs> yeah, well, well. This is just how it is. And the output level, um, it should be from about four, 100 millivolts to 6 volt peak peak. It's completely uncalibrated, so you don't know what you get. They don't even write anything around this potentiometer here and then the um, RF uh, output is should be about uh, 50 ohms they say something about a coupler I don't know if this is the right coupler because this is the uh, transformer that was actually um, connected to the unit so there's a BNC connector here and uh, it says here 1 to 40 kilo cycles and the number here is not exactly what it says here, right? Matching unit 5726. So this is probably from another unit. And as you can see, this one was thrown out real bad. And this was to used to, well, a 1245. Well, what I got here is a 1246. So, I mean, there is another generator I just didn't get. Too bad. <sighs> this is what happens when people throw out stuff. And I think I need to open this and perform a real nice inspection. Because as you can see here, it was thrown out real bad. By the way, this is very very heavy this unit I believe everything here is thick thick metal and good handles the wire is really really thin but at least it is uh, correct three pin with a protective earth so I should dare to plug this in the voltage selector is uh, very impressive. We got all sorts of different voltages here. And I've been able to look a little bit through this and I think it should be more or less correct. So I should dare to power it up. But first, let's look a little bit inside. Okay, so it was more than 12 kilos. So that's what I'm saying, it was quite heavy. It's um, quite beautiful inside. And so far, the nasty dents in the top plate didn't affect anything on the inside. And that is, by the way, um, the voltage adjustment point. Um, you should adjust the high voltage for 250 volts. I was able to find a schematic online. So here we go with a little 
nice power supply and if I'm not mistaken we got a little rectifier tube voltage reference tube mm, cathode follower pentode and a voltage measurement feedback tube so this is a classic high voltage uh, regulated uh, power supply and uh, nothing fancy smanchy about that a cute little tube but anyway i need to have a much deeper look inside the big case here because when i move this around i definitely hear some parts falling around in that one so how are we gonna go in that one let's inspect the internal parts a little bit more see the uh, power supply was just mounted with two screws in each side like this here and here and then i could just pull it down real careful and now it's here so i was pulling out the tubes and having a little bit of an inspection so the 6x4 uh, that is the rectifier tube is a double rectifier uh, it's also known as the easy 90 so it's a little bit more powerful than the one you normally see the easy 80 is is what i think you see most but what do you think about those pins how is it possible to throw this device and bend the pins like this and not crack the tube? I mean, really? I am a little bit impressed. And here is a very interesting tube, by the way. The QV03, also known as the 5763. <laughs> and this can't be first class selection. I mean, look at how, how bent the whole glass is. The bottom part is just so out of angle. What the heck? Was this made by a really really tired worker or something <laughs> and uh, yeah and then of course you have the 85A2 that is an 85 volt uh, voltage regulator tube neon filled voltage regulator and it will um, give you about 85 volt from uh, 1 to 10 milliamps so that is more or less what it, there is to it and then here's a the classic uh, tiny little um, pentode that is used for the voltage measurement and feedback and the the, the power drive um, this baby here I believe this is just a yeah and a, a cathode follower really so it's uh, quite powerful and there's another one yes it's also fast by the way and there's another one exactly like that in here as the oscillator tube and uh, this whole circuit here there isn't any uh, buffer and amplifier or anything like that it is just the oscillator and then out out you go and the the tapping uh, one of the windings uh, in the in the carousel switch here is the output uh, winding that goes straight to the output connector and that is the output connector here right and it just goes to uh, one of the connectors here and that's that's just out it's a um, quite beautiful made really if we have a little look here at the carousel when I move it around all this feels quite all right and when you move it like this you can imagine you want a big solid piece of metal and then uh, <laughs> Look at the thickness of this massive, I think it's 15 millimeters. So, I mean, a half an inch thick. 
is a solid, solid mass. But of course, this is how you create stability. <laughs> oh, there's another thing I really want to show you. You are not going to like it. Depending on the different angles, can you see this? I think this is nickel plated or there is some sort of a metal plating. And then you see these tiny, tiny, funny, funny hairs. And they're actually growing, kind of chemically growing from the material. And they will create all sorts of shorts. They are as thin as, I don't know, very, very thin. And they're very difficult to catch. But they're all over the place and they're really, really long. See, depending on how the light goes in here. I have a macro lens now on my camera and this is why it looks a little bit weird here. But I need to go really, really close. Yeah, I don't know if I can take a picture of this. See, I can't get... Yeah, it is bad. So I'm probably going to try and brush this and then uh, compressed air clean this. Oh, look at that. It looks like a carpet. Oh, yeah. I told you uh, earlier in the video um, about some loose items inside this shield box. Yeah, we had a shield box here and it was connected all the way around here with this nice springy contact and what I found so far is one washer and one little screw so and I haven't yet figured out where are they missing maybe yeah okay that could be it but I need to do a little bit of inspection to see if I can figure that out maybe something is falling apart here See, where's the missing screw? At least I figured out where the screw is missing, right there. So that is nice. Uh, by the way, there is a little thing I want to share with you guys. So here is this fantastic carousel switch, right? And look at all this massive metal. And they're really trying to make it nice and stable and all that fantasticness, right? And here is the bearing or shaft holder thingy, right? And you know what, what they kind of screwed up here? Look, if I take this here and just... I don't know if you can see this. But there's no ball bearing or anything in here it's just moving I'm not even grabbing it real hard or anything see tickety 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 <laughs> so what is the point with all this all this beautifulness and coolness is just destroyed by a missing bearing oh ridiculous that is what it is but anyway I, I kind of like the way that they added these little shield boxes so that mains voltage goes up and in here so it's rooted in between the two metals so all everything is completely shielded so that that's quite nice actually right and then there must be some wires from the filament voltages to the bulb so this is the on off power on indicator right but look how much effort was put into all that mechanics just to do the off switch and uh, the indicator i mean <laughs> oh my goodness i'm happy i didn't design anything like that this could have been a nightmare you can imagine this being designed in what 1960s or something i've been trying to google uh, around and figuring out uh, how old this is and i did find some information about 1974 but this could also be even a lot older like 10 years older even 
Maybe we can figure this out. But I'll have a little deeper look. Maybe it's written on this capacitor as well. But yeah, I'll have to go and clean up the metal hair. And then we can try and power it up. So, I feel I'm ready to power this up for the very first time. There's just one little detail I want to share with you. What I normally do. So this is V2. And if we look at the schematic, you'll be able to see that this is the output um, tube for the DC power supply. And if we count on the pins here on the socket, this is pin number one, two, three, and four. They're together, right? Five, six, and seven. So seven, three, and four, they're together, and they go to a red wire. So that is our plus 250 volt, and this is the voltage I would like to monitor. And this red wire goes all the way up here, and then the red wire comes up here, and is connected to the bottom side of all these. So pin one is the yellow wire that goes to the entire oscillator unit. So I've, of course, marked pin 1 here, and this is what I would like to monitor. So I feel lucky. Let's do it. And first I connect mains voltage, and I don't see anything. Ooh, all is fine here, right? Nice, shiny light. But I don't get any voltage here and that is because we need to warm up the tubes and then we go I hope to 200 and wow did you see it's in perfect regulation and here is the output is a little bit low oh it's of course because I didn't this is bad there's definitely something wrong with this cable I think this unit actually works, and I also think that somebody modified the output for very, very low level. So it is in the millivolt of output. And there's another problem with the output level here. This is not directly connected to an attenuator or something. This is a drive to the tube's uh, grid system. So this is also modifying uh, buyers and all that kind of stuff. And if you crank up the drive, it affects, of course, the output level. But you see how bad that really works. And if I crank it all the way down, of course, I stop the oscillator, right? But what happens if I crank this all the way up? Let's look at the power consumption at the same time. So this is the normal 34 watts, and now I crank up, oui, see, 53 watts. And this is, of course, how you kill the tube. And now I crank it all the way down to zero, 26 watts. So this is not how you should have done, designed this unit, to be honest. And it affects, of course, also the output frequency. I've adjusted a little bit around with the high voltage supply and that regulation is just amazingly good. So all that is great. And here you go. This is the highest range and uh, I believe that one goes to 50 megacycles. And that will be more or less like that, right? Let's have a look. Okay, 50. And uh, I measure 52.6. So it's not that bad, really. After all those many, many years, it's still working. Now I'll just go and see if I can fix all the mechanical details. But I don't want to make this video any longer and more boring for you guys. So thank you very much for watching. See you. Bye bye.